Welcome to the second installment of my ear training series. In this video, we will be studying major thirds, minor thirds, major sixths, and minor sixths. These kinds of intervals are all found within a C major arpeggio. We can use those things as reference. I'm going to show you how they relate to each other first, and then I'll give you some tips for picking them out individually. Then we will do a little bit of practice in identifying the different intervals. So let's get started. We're going to start with a major third, and a major third is the distance between scale degree one and scale degree three. A minor third is the distance between scale degree three and scale degree five. A major sixth is the distance between scale degree five and the higher up scale degree three. And a minor sixth is the distance between scale degree three and the higher up scale degree one. So you can see how they all relate. A major third with a C and an E combined with a minor sixth of an E and a C creates an octave. As is the same with a major sixth. So major sixth with a C to an A combined with a minor third of an A to C. Let's talk about the sound that you're hearing. We're going to start with, again, major thirds. An example that starts with an ascending major third is when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. So here's that one. A song that has a descending major third in it is Summertime. Summertime. Minor third, again, is the distance between scale degree three and scale degree five in a major scale. One song that starts with an ascending minor third is Green Sleeves. A song with a descending minor third in it, you can think of it as a sound that a doorbell makes. Or, if that is too close to you as a major third, I think of the song, if you know the song, Black Socks. Black socks, they never get dirty. The longer you wear them, the blacker they get. An ascending major sixth is in the beginning of My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. My Bonnie Lies Over the Sea. One song that starts with a descending major sixth is Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. These aren't going to mean anything to you if you don't know the song. If you hear the interval and you hear another song and you that makes more sense to you to put together, then use that song. I'm just putting out suggestions based on what I know and what I think people might be likely to know. The last interval we're studying today is a minor sixth. This one is tricky. There aren't a lot of songs that have minor sixths in them, at least that start with a minor sixth. But I've heard, I've never actually seen The Godfather, but I've heard that starts with a descending minor sixth. I don't know if that's the real song. And then I couldn't find I couldn't find anywhere a song that began with a, an ascending minor sixth, so I just think of scale degree three going up to scale degree one. So we're going to do some practice now. The first thing we're going to do is just a little repeat after me. I am asking that you sing what you hear because singing is actually a very good way of getting to know what something is supposed to sound like, that is a process called audiation. So I'm going to just sing an example of each interval and then we're going to do some practice with identifying the different ones. We're going to start each interval on a C. We're going to start with a minor third. And you can just sing it on La if you want. La, la. 
major third. Sing it on la. La, la. Minor sixth. Sing it with me. Ready, go. La, la. Here's a major sixth. Sing it with me. Ready, go. La, la. This is something that I highly recommend you do if you really want to get to know these intervals. So we're going to do a little bit of practice in identifying the intervals. Um, in this video, I'm just going, going to do one example of each, and then I will have an accompanying video like I did last week of everything, and you can explore them more in depth. We're just going to start with four examples of ascending intervals. I will play the interval for you. I'll give you five seconds. I'll play it again, and then I will reveal the answer. First interval. That is a major third. Second interval. That is a minor sixth. Third interval. That is a major sixth, fourth interval. That is a minor third. Now we're going to do descending intervals. First example. That is a major sixth. Second example. That is a major third. Third example. That is a minor third. Fourth example. That is a minor sixth. Now I'm going to do four examples of stacked intervals. What I do is I try to listen to both notes and then sing them in my mind. If you, if you do this in a class, you can't sing them out loud, but because this is just a video, you can sing them. If you can pick out the two tones that you hear and sing them, that will help you judge the distance. So first example. I'm going to break it down for you. That is a minor third. Second example. Breaking it down. That is a major sixth. Third example. That is a major third and fourth example.
that is a minor six. So I hope this was a helpful introduction to the major and minor thirds and sixths. Again, this will be accompanied by another video where you can do a more extended practice. That video will also include examples of perfect intervals, which you will probably be familiar with if you saw the video last week. Thank you very much for watching and for all kinds of music theory tutorials and songwriting and fun and cool stuff that isn't always music theory, um, subscribe so you can see what happens. Until next time, stay mindful, stay musical, and stay out of trouble.